Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm gonna to be talking about The Bubble. The Bubble is an American meta-comedy movie that follows a group of actors who are known for their involvement in a fictional movie franchise called Cliff Beasts, and are called upon once more to work in another sequel. This time, however, their work proves difficult due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone is forced to stay in one space, known as the Bubble, as they work to complete shooting of the movie within three months. Chaos unfolds shortly after, causing production to spiral out of control while everyone tries to deal with the insanity of filming a movie while dealing with each other and the strict health protocols in place. Watching a bad comedy is one of the worst types of movie experiences anybody can have, because if the humor is bad, then there's nothing else to have fun with. And this movie is without a doubt the worst comedy of the year so far. It has occasional moments of brilliance, but for the most part, it was absolute torture to sit through. To begin with, there's not much of a central character to latch onto apart from Carol Cobb, who's played by Karen Gillan, and she feels out of place anytime she's on screen. It's not that her performance is bad per se, as she does a good job where she can, but even she can't save her character from the awful writing. Every other supporting character is introduced in clumsy fashion. They just appear out of nowhere during a cocktail party where everyone gathers prior to shooting, and there's so many of them that it's hard to keep track of who's who, especially when most of them are insufferable. Because it's a Judd Apatow movie, there are plenty of familiar faces from his previous works, though most of them don't have that much charisma. Leslie Mann in particular feels like she's phoning it in just like she has with her husband's other recent movies. By far the most annoying character in the movie was the director. He has this obnoxious, pompous attitude that was already a cliche in other meta movies before this one, and here it's just tired and played out. It feels like the filmmakers couldn't decide if they wanted him to be a snooty indie filmmaker or an experienced veteran, so he treads an awkward middle ground that never feels right. There is one saving grace amongst the cast though in the form of Dieter, who's played by Pedro Pascal. He hams it up anytime he's in a cliff beast scene and has a hilarious subplot where he tries desperately to get laid while staying in the bubble, but repeatedly fails. I loved everything about his character. I was surprised by the number of celebrity cameos too, and short as they were, they were still a breath of fresh air from the usual boredom. James McAvoy was probably the best one in this regard, but unfortunately his moment comes at a time where the movie long outstays its welcome. Most of the movie's comedy simply isn't funny. Even though the idea of celebrities making fun of themselves and the film industry at large is an interesting concept, it's completely butchered by jokes that fail to generate laughs and go on for way longer than necessary. There's a scene where the music musician Beck gives an impromptu appreciation concert to the film staff, and apart from it being the most half-assed cameo in the whole movie, it goes on forever. The characters pull off a bunch of weird dance move while the bit goes on for minutes. Speaking of dancing, the movie feels the need to include TikTok of all things as part of its many cultural references. The pacing keeps getting ruined by dance sequences that interrupt the flow of the story both in and outside of the Cliff Beast movie, and once again they go on for much longer than they need to. Other times, the comedy is more gross than just pure cringe. One scene starts off on the right foot, as the cast members are sick with the flu and have to film a scene. This results in characters fainting and hanging from one wires, and seeing them floating and spinning around while they look like they're in the Cliff Beast movie did get a few chuckles from me. But the movie goes a step further and has characters start puking all over the place and even on each other. This is just one of many examples where the movie adds too much to something that could be funny on its own merits and makes it unbearable to watch. The amount of filler this movie has becomes evident almost immediately. Every character has their own subplot, and with the exception of Dieter's, none of them are interesting. Between this and the absurd amount of time that jokes go on for, the movie is practically begging for a re-edit. No one wants to watch a bad comedy for two hours, especially one that's rooted in the depressing situation that is the COVID-19 pandemic. This is where the movie really started to grind in my gears, as it goes way over the top with things like specific zones for staff, quarantine montages, and exaggerating the paranoia of it all. If this movie came out a year or so ago, it wouldn't have been as bad, since it would have released at the peak of the insanity when all these crazy rules were being put in place. But two years into it, after society has gotten a better handle on things, everything about COVID-19 in this movie just feels dated in its execution. There are some instances where the movie can't even be bothered to follow its own logic in this area. Characters will avoid wearing masks when talking to each other in one scene, only for them to start freaking out about social distancing in another. There was no consistency to how the virus was being treated. One of the very few things I enjoyed in this movie were the cliff beast scenes where the actors are portrayed in the world they're meant to be filming in. They are gloriously cheesy in a self-aware kind of way, as the actors act hammy 
me on purpose, and the special effects with the dinosaurs are somewhat entertaining. This being said, even these scenes can escape from the cringe at times. As I mentioned earlier, the TikTok dance becomes a thing where it really doesn't need to be, and there's a part where characters have to blow up the dinosaurs by shooting them in their... glowing reproductive organs. It's as terrible as it sounds. There is some effort made into showcasing how difficult Hollywood productions can be to make, but it gets lost in the ridiculousness of it all. Things like unproductive meetings and snooty critics are mentioned by characters and would be easy to empathize with, but it comes off more pretentious whining than sarcastic commentary. It doesn't help that the production staff of this movie's movie are cartoonishly awful people, even though it's supposed to be ironic. One of the bosses, who's played by Kate McKinnon, claims to get the vaccine ahead of everyone else because, and I quote, she's a rich person. The dialogue was so bad at times it made me want to rip my hair out. All this movie did was remind me of everything I hated about the beginning of the pandemic, especially with how hard that life supposedly was for multimillionaire celebrities and producers when movies halted production. This fact could have been taken advantage of, but instead of being meaningful, it fails in every conceivable way. Overall, The Bubble is a terrible comedy from beginning to end, and is easily the most disappointing film that Judd Apatow has made to date. If you like comedies that are self-referential in nature, I strongly urge you to avoid watching this one, especially if you're looking for a nice distraction from the pandemic. Everything about how it presents its comedy and concepts are tone deaf, rushed, and pretty much pointless. Its characters are more annoying than humorous, and it adds nothing new to the conversation regarding COVID-19 and the excesses of Hollywood. It almost feels like a two hour long in-joke that only the cast and crew of this movie will get, which is good enough reason to avoid this movie like the plague. What did you think about this movie? Did you find it as painful to sit through and watch as I did, or were you able to find some redeeming factors to it? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap up my review of The Bubble. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Norwegian romantic drama, Battle Freestyle. Bye bye!